This is the Cadex Defense CDX SS, seven stars rifle. This is a PRS competition rifle and I think it'll be most popular in the six millimeter cartridges, but this one is a 223 with a fast eight inch twist barrel, which I think personally makes it one of the most fun guns to shoot in the whole of the world. Defensive rifle today, I'm going to give you a big detailed review. Might be a few blips because I've got an awful lot to try and remember and convey, but this is the Cadex Defense CDX SS Seven Stars Rifle. Now, STARS is an acronym and it's Sport and Tactical Application Rifle Series. I have to have a little aid memoir over there because I can't remember these acronyms. They're generally advertising blurb, they don't really mean a great deal, but there we go. Let me tell you about the rifle. Okay, this rifle is available in quite a variety of calibers, uh, mostly things like 6mm BR, 6 Dasher, 6 Creedmoor, 6 5 Creedmoor, 308. But this one's a 223 Rem and it's an 8 inch twist rate on the barrel, which is uh, an interesting factor. An 8 inch twist 223 is something I quite like, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. This is a Bartline 5R um, single point cut rifle barrel, beautiful barrel, very very good, no problems at all. It's threaded 5 8 by 24 and it comes with a brake, although it didn't come with a spanner for the brake lock nut. So because the brake was not fixed on its index, I took the brake off and I used the moderator instead. But you should get a spanner with these to lock that in position. The barrel is um, fluted, 10 flutes on it, and everything's Cerakoted. This is available in a huge number of colours, it's, it's quite insane. You can have sort of modest colours like the greys, or you can have quite bonkers colours like uh, egg, Rob, I think it's called Robin's Egg Blue and Orange, things like that. So you'll really get a rifle that stands out. It's got Arca rail on the underside, and this is the um, Arca Elite system rail, so it's got the locking mechanisms as well. You've got loads of M-lock down the side, 17 inches, 430 millimeters long, uh, this rail, so you've got loads of space to um, optimize it for balance as you would prefer. I've actually set it in this tripod here just so I've got something to hold it up, because I don't actually have an Arca bipod, funnily enough. The barrel is straight taper, it goes from 22mm at the muzzle to 20, sorry, to 32mm at the action. The action footprint is essentially Remington 700, but we'll come to that in a minute. So the Cadex action is made in Canada, um, it's a three lug action, so although it looks sort of Remington 700-ish, it is fundamentally different. Now the bolt release catch is on top of the bolt there, just at the back of the action, and it's a little bit small and tricky to get your fingertips on to get the actual bolt out, but there we go. So it's a three lug bolt, 60 degree lift. It's got a 76mm handle with a 24mm teardrop on the end. It is fast and slick in operation and it's got faster and slicker. It is actually fluted. The handle is not too long to over sort of torque the bolt but just be aware that it's one of those that needs just a tiny bit of pressure just to make sure it slides home smoothly. Um, this is the 223 bolt face so it's the small bolt face it's still a short length action though and um, three lugs is obviously 60 degree lifters so you've got a single claw extractor on the side and a single sprung plunder ejector which you can see in the copious amounts of video that I filmed with this rifle just shooting it. Safety catch, two position, forward fire, rear for safe. Um, it doesn't lock the bolt in, so that's that. Whether you'd use it in a competition rifle or not, I don't know. It's, I mean, this is basically, it's a PRS rifle. It's not a sort of catch over from a hunting rifle in any description. 20 MOA Picatinny rail bolted to the top of the action. The chassis itself is all aluminium, but it does actually have quite a lot of polymer components on, we'll go into in a second. It's AICS magazine compatible. That's actually a large round um, AICS mag, but I've got a 2231 for it as well. Although ironically, I forgot to take it to the range on one of the trips, so I actually had to single feed the rounds. But that did lead me to the beneficial conclusion that if you just throw a round in, 
on top of the mag it will single load quite easily and 223s can be quite tricky so no drama with that at all looking at some of the other features you've seen this uh, on the intro video so you've got a folding stock it locks in position there's a button on this side uh, pop that button and it will come all the way back round that can be adjusted make sure you've got no slop or play in it it's got QD anchor points for sling stud on this side QD anchor points there picatinny on the underside and it's got toolless adjustment for recoil pad length of pull and the cheek piece the recoil pad doesn't twist though it just goes up and down now there are two cheek pieces supplied i didn't notice this on the first little video i did but this one's actually asymmetric so you can take that one off which is quite a large bulbous rounded shape and use the narrower shape you do need to though there's a foam top on this and if you can see there's a hole there that screws it down to the post well i'd have to sort of go through that foam and damage that one to take that one off there are two columns here that hold that in position and although they give you good height adjustment they're not super stiff so you do get quite a lot of wobble and personally the large radius one like that, I didn't like it at all. I found it gave me a very uncomfortable head position. I was very much rolled over trying to align with the scope. Um, there's no play in the stop, there's no movement, there's no vibration on firing, there's nothing transfers up to to ring your head. Okay, it's only a 223, but fundamentally those sort of vibrations transfer through and they don't on this, so I, I do like that. is a DX2 Evo. It's got a straight blade on it which is actually positionally adjustable forward and backward. Now this is actually as it arrives a two-stage unit. This is a safe dry fire, click, bang like that. But you can adjust this trigger to become single stage. It's also adjustable in weight from 550 to 1100 grams which is about 25 to 40 ounces I think. Don't quote me on that one. I'm a metric man myself these days. Overall length of the rifle is 1155 millimeters, which is 45 and a half inches. And then of course, folded, that drops significantly to about 37 inches, which I think is just over 900 millimeters. The button there is the one you push down to make it fold back. Overall weight's 5.4 kilograms, which is 11.8 pounds. Now, given all the M lock on here and the fact it's a PRS rifle, people are no doubt going to add a significant amount of weight to that to tailor the balance to themselves. And Kadex themselves offer a lot of those weights to you. They also offer things like there's a, an assembly that fits on the butt. You can add weights on there as well if that's what you want to do. As I said, the trigger blade is adjustable for position, but length of pull is adjustable with this side lever here. Just lock that down there, and that goes in and out. So you go from 13 and a half to 15 inches, which is 343 to 381 millimeters. That's obviously changes the slight overall length of the rifle and everything, but those are details I'm sure you'll set up and confirm for yourself if you buy one of these rifles. The chassis system is actually called Kadex Strike Pro. It is available, I think, for uh, any Remington 700 action, which is interesting in itself. But I do like their action, and it's got some really nice styling details, which are a bit difficult to show you on here, but I'll put some pictures overlaid on this, and you'll see in the video. I like the facets on the side of the action. It's really slick looking, and I do love the fact you can have it in totally Serico, however you like. Now, let's talk about some of the downsides here, because I'm not going to bluff you completely. Here's the thing. 
everything's removable AR15 style grip. And the thing about an AR15 style grip that's vertical like that is that you've got an Allen screw going up there to fasten it into the gun. And it's actually really difficult. So make sure you get a ball ended Allen key to get that in there without actually trying to wangle it because those are designed for raked grips and it's a raked screw. So with it being vertical, the Allen key's hard to fit inside. So yeah, get yourself a ball ended Allen key. Now, the Kdex is delivered with various bits and pieces. You get a load of Allen keys and torques, which are not ball ended. You also get a muzzle thread cap, which um, will clean up the muzzle if you don't want to use a brake or a mod. You get stickers with it. You get some Loctite with it, which is in the instruction book. It tells you about losing Loctite in various locations. But here's one thing. I got an instruction book that didn't match the rifle. I got the instruction book that was for um, a slightly different rifle. So it wasn't totally clear on how to disassemble the unit. You also get a very glossy catalogue. And there is also a nice rifle case, actually, which I've taken a picture of, and I'll overlay that too. Um, there's a nice description of here how the Arca Elite system works in terms of the fact you've got detented locking positions and things like that. But if you're in the market for a rifle ace, I suspect you know that kind of thing. If you do want to take it apart and maintain it, you can't just pop the two action screws out the bottom and lift the action out like a regular Remington 700 because within all these polymer components, they're actually sort of concealed. So you've got to take quite a few of these polymer sections away to access those action screws. Shouldn't be a huge issue, but it's just something to bear in mind if you do need to take the rifle apart. There are quite a few small steel nuts and things as well that when you take the screw out, the nut drops out on the counter. So you need to make sure you pop those all back in the correct positions. Right, let's tell you about shooting it. Number one, um, I have an 8-inch Twist 223. Mine is fairly versatile in the fact it will shoot most bullets quite well. It does have a particular liking for 55 grain Hornady Super Performance Varmint bullets and also 77 grain TMKs, which is a Sierra tipped match king. Um, interestingly, this barrel, it's an 8-inch twist, and it does tell you it's for heavy bullets. I'm not, you know, criticising Kadex for this, but the barrel didn't seem that versatile. You'll see me shoot some groups through it, which are, um, you know, n totally unremarkable, which was pretty much on the wearing warm-up stage, you know, running the barrel in. Um, I played with some hand loads, which I don't normally do in, in review rifles for various purposes, but 69 grain TMKs started to work a lot better. 77 grain TMKs it was nice and you know there are three sequential groups there that shot at 100 meters not 100 yards 100 meters nine percent further i think that's the worst one at 12 millimeters center to center and that's actually also a seven round group not a five round group uh, oddly that's a four and that's a five but you know that one's not zeroed that one's nearly zeroed that one's kind of zeroed you get the idea it is both precise and accurate. Um, I had no drama shooting at all, and it's only got a 12 power scope on top, so I wasn't exactly pushing the precision limits in terms of shooting it. trigger is crisp, the bolt works very smooth and quick, there's no problems with feed or ejection and as I said if you throw a single round in on top of the mag it will feed to the chamber. No resonance through the stock, everything works beautifully with it and if you want it in a mad colour you know you can really have a rifle that stands out from the crowd. Um, in terms of anything else to tell you, yes if you buy one 77 grain Sierra Tip Match King VIT 140 Lapua Brass CCI BR2 Primer works beautifully in this gun. Uh, I wish I'd had some of the 73 grain Hornady um, um, ELDMs left, but I'd run out of those because that also I think would work suspiciously well because that's another one my rifle likes in the same twist rate and sort of configuration. But this long barrel does give exceptionally good velocity figures. You know, we're up near 3,000 feet per second with a 77 grain bullet, which, you know, is very low recoil, quite low cost in terms of reloading, and of course quite ballistically capable. So 
if you were to have one of these for other reasons than PRS, because I think to be fair, a PRS competitor is going to go with one of the six millimeters. I don't think there's much of a a current fashion for anything else, and I can see a lot of technical benefits to the six millimeter rifles. Thank you for the Maven Optic from Hound Outdoors as well as the rifle. And yeah, so if you like the video, please like it. Please subscribe, please click the notification bell. I've actually put that back up there. And you know, share it around, share it around your friends because if they want to see more reviews from me, there are more reviews from me. Right, thanks for watching, bye for now.